Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel, The Bob's Garage. Uh, today I'm going to be working on um, an alignment for my Jetta. So I replaced the struts, and when I replaced them, I noticed that the steering wheel was uneven, which drives me crazy. Um, I, I knew which way it was out, so I repositioned a little bit the top of the struts, but I couldn't fix it. So I'm going to show you how I do uh, a quick alignment. Um, just bring it a little bit closer. And I would have used as a spring box. A uh, spring box uh, basically create parallel lines of strings to form a reference for the alignment of the car. So um, this video hopefully helps a little bit. Been doing various forms of this for a while, but this seems to work pretty well. Okay, this is what I set up. I kind of improvised. I was going to do something a little bit more elaborate. Um, I've got some uh, angle. It's got a series of holes and punches. You can kind of see it in um, uh, supports for garage door openers. And I was going to make um, a, a bar, you know, with this this um, angle bracket to suit the width of the car and to make sure the holes are aligned. But this, this is the um, this is what I did for now, just because I didn't have all the materials. I uh, just screwed a screw um, across, just pick 75 inches across to give it roughly about two or three inches on each side and ran a screw and then the string across to the front and then measured 75 inches across the front here and down this side and then I had to make a slight adjustment so it, it's parallel to the car and then I started doing measurements so again it's it's a a a, a square you're building a reference and the car again has got to be square within it so I just got lucky that the, the, the dimensions I chose and the position I put it in allowed me to set it right up so it's perfectly centered in the back which is I don't know how that could happen and I've done the, the, the front they've checked the front and what you do so I'll just show this so again I just check both sides to make sure you're both about the same so they were three and five eighths on both sides Let's go over here. Give me a lot of running around on this. And you got three and five eighths on the side. You know, five eighths, five, maybe nine sixteenths. And then I got the same dimension in the center here, which is uh, three and three eighths. And I just slid the two jack stands around. They got three eighths in the front as well. So three and three eighths. Like I said, just lucked out how easily it was. Now all you got to do is pick the same reference point. So it's supposed to be, I think it's no more than a 16th toe in. So here I've got two and a quarter. There, got two and five sixteenths. So a 16th toe in. That's maximum. So I might back that out a teeny bit. On this side, I've got here, try to keep it close to the center line, two and a quarter, and here, two and a quarter. So this is pretty much, here, double check that again, two and a quarter, oh sorry, two and an eighth. So this is towed in a lot. So this needs to go out at least a sixteenth, or in, at least a sixteenth of an inch. Only want a sixteenth maximum, zero to a sixteenth. So that's all I'll do. So I'll take down the string, leave everything the way it was, just loosen it off, and then I'll adjust the tie rod ends, set the string back up, and see how it goes. Okay, started with the side because it was the worst. I turned it in. Um, probably I checked the threads per inch. I thought it was about a. 16th of a thread per inch. You're kind of averaging over the two sides. Make sure your steering wheel is centered. But I turned about half a turn, three quarters of a turn, I thought it was, and counting flats. And and it wasn't enough, so I had to do it again. So now, I don't know if the camera can pick it up. I've got two and an eighth. And two and an eighth. So zero. No two in. So that's the minimum you want a little bit of toe in 
but zero's okay. That one, yeah, looks like about just a hair over two and an eighth. Yeah, that's again right on at two and an eighth, so that's pretty close. The other side, haven't changed it yet, but it's got a sixteenth. So I'm going to try to just make a slight adjustment. So here's hidden split the difference, like a half turn. And it's the same thing. It's towed in, which that would be likely right at the max. That's uh, 2 and 3 sixteenths. And, and maybe maybe half. Maybe I might just leave that. And it's just uh, 30 second under. So I think I might just leave that. Uh, so I mean, likely that the steering will be slightly offset. It wasn't bad at all to begin with, but you know that looks like about uh, five thirty seconds there, and this is like six thirty seconds. So one thirty second difference. That's pretty darn good. And then here, like I said, maybe went in a bit too far. Here. Make sure I get right on the same point. I'm gonna make sure I'm not touching the string. And by the way, I double checked the string to make sure everything's still centered perfectly. So that's just a tad under two and an eighth. Just a bit over two and an eighth. That's pretty good. That mean well that means it's actually towed out a little bit. Yeah, maybe I better back this off just a half turn. Half turn or a few flats anyways. Because that's reading that's a bit under actually. You gotta be really careful to get this all square. That's pretty much right at two and eight or just below. And that's yeah, that's a bit less. So I gotta pull it pulling because that means it's slightly told out. So I'm gonna I went a bit too far, so I'll make one little bit one little final adjustment. So this is probably the fourth time now. And now I'm just making uh less than a quarter turn changes. So here now I've got and you gotta make sure you're square. Just a tad more than two and an eighth and over here just a tad less than two and an eighth so just probably about a sixteenth towed in I've also taken references off the rims as well so just a tad under two and three eighths and just that one looks like right on two and three eighths. Two and three eighths. Two and three eighths. So pretty close to zero. Just slightly maybe more than zero. But that's good. Yeah, you can see that's uh just a bit past. So I'm pretty happy with that. It's a good starting point. A bit under two, th two and three eighths. And there, right on the two and three eighths. So that's maybe a 30 second. Maybe, yeah, maybe about a 30 second or so. A bit less than 30 second, but that's fantastic. I double checked the other side as well. It's going well. So, like I said, it's the first time I've done this way, and I've tried all kinds of stuff. I used to just do it with my, uh, some of my 4x4s, just measure off the rear axle with the parallel 2x4s, which got me pretty close. I've gotten some, probably about 100,000 miles of some of the cars I've had. Okay, everyone, so uh, I thought I'd bring a bit of a road trip back, uh, but uh, full disclosure, I've actually had to take the car down on the relatively long road trip, uh, about a 1,200 mile or 2,000 kilometer trip. So I've already got some pretty good feedback on how the uh, alignment's doing, and it was pretty good. I was pretty surprised. The steering wheel's turned just slightly. I'll show you that in a second. 
but uh, pretty impressed how close I got this time. So, you know, I was down to about a 30 second, you know, I'm going to wind up uh, making a slight correction on the left and the right side. Just maybe one or two flats out and just double check the alignment because the steering wheel is just a little bit cocked. And I said with a very little toe in at the minimum amount of toe in, the steering's a bit lighter, but I'm okay with that. Um, I'd rather have less toe in, have a, a little wander here and there, than to have the extra wear. I don't, you know, the, the heavy steering is nice, uh, gives you a little bit more sense of stability. You know, you can, the, uh, tire, the steering could tend to wander over uh, irregularities in the uh, in the road, but I prefer it this way. I'd rather have my my uh, tires lasting as long as I possibly can. Okay, so again, nice straight section of road. Um, student pulling a little bit to the side, no hands on an, on an open section of road here. And go into the crown here a little bit because the with the steering, if there's because of the crown, it's going to drive this way or drive way depending on the crown. But you can see. Again, nothing right down the center of the road. You know, again, it's going to pull a little bit because of the wows and whatnot on the road, but uh, it seems to be really good. The steering wheel is just slightly, slightly changed, but uh, they're slightly offset to the left. A little bit of a correction there, but pretty good. You know, and this was much better than it was before I started. Obviously, it was uh, uh, it was it was probably about a 10 degree angle in the steering wheel. So pretty happy with that and again I'm on the side of the road so it's going to naturally want to pull to the side so that's pretty good okay final adjustment I went to two flats so one third of a turn going down the center of the road no hands and ironically the steering wheel is just slightly to the other side now so just a tad too much there but pretty darn close so I'm, I'm basically going back and forth on the crown of the road here, but uh, pretty happy with that. So that's probably all I'm going to do. Again, no hand. Uh, looks to be pretty much as centered that it's not going to bug me too much. Okay, going down a smooth road here. The steering wheel looks really good very light steering which is what I like no pulling the steering wheel looks really centered so I'm really happy having to correct a little bit to the left but that makes sense because of the crown on the road I've already I, I've already uh, as I said I was driving before I can go to the left side and you get it pulled the other way which is right um, I just correct I mean the uh, the car is going to want to to fall off the crown of the road so yeah really good real happy with that I think the only thing I'm gonna do next though is I will set up the string box again just verify that uh, I do have a relatively thin um, or little amount of toe in or make sure the toe in is still about a 30 second or so but yeah way happy with that so um just to show you, this is what I was using to check the um, set of verniers, just to check. The inside of the uh, tread is typically what takes the most wear, just because of the camber. But I find the same spot on both sides of the tires. And I've got, uh, that is 0.25 of an inch of tread. Let's check the outside. I'm kind of getting this right around this little section right here. Same, same here. Two seven on the outside, 0.27. Check that again. Better reading. 0 0.265. 0 0.262. Same spot right about here. Two 
six fives or six point two six five again point two six maybe a little bit more inside wear on that one and just for comparison in the back and this is a independent suspension in the back so it can also be out of alignment but I haven't done anything here and again about the same 0.265 more or less so that's great pretty even wear all the way around yeah, so I've tried a bunch of different methods just to get my uh, alignment uh, kind of square as I mentioned with this car. I put uh, uh, replacing springs in the struts. It was pretty good. The steering was just slightly off-centered and uh, everything was good. I, I went about two, three hundred miles. I didn't notice any appreciable wear, but that's pretty short. So I've tried different methods in the past. Like I said, I've, um, I've had in 4x4s where there's a solid rear axle. I've used 2x4s and run them from the front to the back to line that worked actually really well but you get a great reference with the solid rear axle i've also used um lasers well, that was a fiasco because you really have to make sure that the line the laser bases are correct found that out the hard way that i had a couple that uh, needed to be leveled before you could do it um, but this is pretty effective like i said i'm going to be modifying this a little bit going forward I'm going to be setting up, it's still pretty warm in here, I'm going to be setting up uh, uh, basically a bar in the front and a bar in the back that's adjustable for the width of the car. We run the same side of the string arrangement and have, as I said, a, a bar, you know, the, the perforated angle iron. Um, so I have the exact same holes every time, um, so I know it's perfectly square. Um, and then you can place those on top of stands and you can make little adjustments. So I got lucky because everything was pretty square to the car, didn't take much adjustment, but certainly a whole lot easier if those um, the strings were sitting on a, a, some type of a stand where I can slide it around very easily, get it started, but very quick. Now, this doesn't make up for a real alignment, but it'll give me a few days of comfort that I'm not gonna do damage, uh, scrub off a good set of tires until I get in to get one scheduled. So again, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Like I said, a uh, quick and easy way of getting your alignment at least dialed in to a rough setting so you can get yourself into a proper arms. Thanks for watching. I was editing this video and I thought I better probably just insert a little light, um, short video just to show what I meant by this. So uh, having two sets of these, just as just regular angle iron that you would use for mounting a, like a garage door opener, having them bolted together, marking off locations to be used and setting up a string through there or even an, an eye bolt through on these locations and then duplicating the other side makes it much faster to create a square uh, string, string box because you're gonna, you can have these set exactly the same, exact same way, you're gonna have a, a similar reference point for putting the string from one side to the other so this ensures that two strings are parallel and then you imagine that duplicating the other side I said I only have one set of these this is what I by the way what I used to use to do my alignments so you'd have that mounted in either end of the car and then run the strings between each one and that sets up your reference box hope that helps explaining this better